And now, without further ado, let us bring you the man that everyone wants to hear from, everyone wants to see him. He is Triple C. He is the Olympic champion, the flyweight champion, and now the UFC reigning, defending, bantamweight champion. And he's flanked by the 2019 Coach of the Year, Captain Eric Albarasi, and he is the one and only Henry Cejudo. <laughs> Henry, how are you? <laughs> he is a man possessed. Look at that look. I'm doing okay, Eric. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, it's good to... It's kiss, good to the, kiss, kiss the ring. I will kiss the ring. I will bend the knee, as you like to say now, uh, Henry. It's so good to have you here. It's so good to talk to you. I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, the first question that I think needs to be addressed right off the top, I think it's the question everyone wants the answer to. H how did yes, it I'm single. I'm single. Well, I was, uh, you, you, you ruined it. I was going to say, how did it feel to have Nikki Bella comment on your post? <laughs> <laughs> how did it feel, Henry? Uninitiated. You know what? You need to give her the hand, all right? You need to give her the Heisman now. She can't be coming around. No Johnny come lately is here, all right? Exactly. You know what? Nikki Bella, you know, you can go wait in line. Because That's you know right. What? I got a line. I got a line from here all the way to Brazil. So Nikki Bella, take a hike. <laughs> Henry going full heel I'll on Nikki I'll Bella. Your favorite I'll tag her. Okay, I will tag her. That the king of cringe, the greatest combat athlete of all time, and she's she's second string now. I, I, I'm assuming that a lot of people are hitting you up, Henry, and uh, so we will leave it at that. Uh, this is an amazing thing that you've done. It's it's truly unbelievable. I remember it was this time last year in Chicago. That's when you found out that you were going to fight Demetrius Johnson. Who would have thought? Fast forward a year, you're now a champion in two different weight classes, and what you pulled off was amazing. But let's go back to Tuesday of last week. Could you tell us exactly what happened with your ankle and how serious was it? Was there a chance that you would have had to pull out of the fight? Um, yeah, there could have been, there could have been a possibility of that, but, uh, I, um, you know, I talked to my coach, I talked to everybody cause I had sprained it. So Tuesday night when we're, I got in on Monday, Tuesday night we trained and everything was going smooth, healthy, man. I've been so strong, man. Physically just strong, man. You know, hats off to my, to, you know, to my science team, Neuroforce one. But anyways, I had, to, you know, I, I always use wrestling shoes for that, for that matter. I, I don't train barefoot. I'm probably about the only guy in MMA that just trains with his wrestling shoes for grappling for everything, because because of that right because I've sprained a lot of my ankles, and uh, anyways Tuesday night we're uh, we're getting ready to start training and whatnot and and at the UFC at the UFC downstairs at the hotel you know typically they have a, a, a you know a training area for us and you know the mat the mats were under like some cheap tape. And uh, when I stepped, I kind of fell into the crack. Or the mats were between the tape and the mats were supposed to be connected. And I, t I literally, I twisted my uh, my left ankle area. And uh, it was scary, man. It had bo ballooned up to maybe about a, to about the size of a grapefruit in the beginning. And I was able to work. I was able to, you know, have Heather London, who was shout out for her. She worked on me the whole week. I mean, I was doing therapy lasers at night. Like it was, uh, it was I was almost doing therapy like every hour on my ankle and and I was a, I was able to walk on it but I, I wasn't able to really shoot or penetrate like to pick pick up or I, I didn't want to test it to do that but it you know it's just you know just if, if it happens in the fight then I'm just have to pull through and so going into the fight I went I went in there with an injury like I went under I went in there with, with the pretty severe you know left ankle sprain wow um were you worried is that that's why you wore the ankle sleeves right yeah, that's why I had to. That's why I had to wear the ankle sleeves. So mentally, were you like this? This is a whole other thing to worry about. Did your confidence drop? Were you worried about your performance? You can't use your ankle. You can't shoot properly, right? You can't move properly. You can't. I mean, you can't fight properly. Right, right. But I, I think it was. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to say I was completely. Com I, I was hurt, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't that much to pull out of the fight. You okay, know what I'm saying like it was with a good tape job and. And, and the therapy that I was doing, like, I was feeling better. It was getting better every single day. This could have so, been disastrous, though, for you. I mean, have you talked to the UFC about rectifying this in the future? Yeah, yeah. And, then, you know, this, this is good that we're actually even talking about it. Hopefully they could uh, – and, and I, I didn't necessarily – I didn't want to scare Dennis. I didn't tell him. I didn't tell him until maybe, like, the last, last night I had to tell the UFC officials. I was like, listen, man, because Heather, Heather was supposed to take off to China. And I says, hey, I'm going to need her here, man, because my ankles, she's the only one that could take my ankle correctly. Mm. 
So that's when I had to kind of break it to him. But I was like, but I'm ready. I says, it's it, it's it's an injury. It happens all the time. And I, I, I sprained my left ankle and I fought Demetrius the first time. I fought him with, uh, with the ankle sprain, way worse than this. And I beat him. What's going on in, in your mind? What are you thinking about after that first round? Because he looked really good in that first round. He was attacking your legs and it seemed like, you know, things were going in his favor. The momentum was on his side. How did you regroup going into the second? Um, it was, um, you know, the game plan was to wrestle, but uh, again, man, I, I couldn't necessarily push off or cover space. Like he was doing a good job throwing his leg kicks, like finding me at range with his leg kicks and God, Ariel, can he kick man? Jesus. I felt, I, I felt like a bat was going through my shins. I mean, the dude could kick and you could hear it. And people that were, you know, near case, they're like, dude, we could hear it. it was like, it was like two sticks going. Like, it was like, you know, uh, uh, the sound of breaking. And uh, I knew that, I knew that he was throwing a lot of power. And I went up, when I went back to my corner, um, you know, I had Santino DeFranco and Captain Eric. And they, they were there. They says, hey, listen, man, this is, they said, Demetrius all over again. I said, your ankle's messed up. They're attacking, he's attacking that front leg. I said, you're just going to have to get into, uh, in, in, into, into boxing, boxing range. You got to go in there. You got to literally fight this guy. Or if not, he's going to stop you pretty much. They didn't say it like that, but that's kind of how I felt. And that's kind of how they were kind of conveying it. So then I just told my coach, I says, all right, man, I'm going inside. I says, I'm coming in. I'm going in. I says, um, if this is what I have to do, then and this is what I have to do. And I had to, I had to make it a dog fight. He was throwing a lot of power. Uh, a lot of people could say that he was he fought emotional or whatnot, but I just felt like he threw a lot of power. I thought he did a good job. Even though he was catching me with kicks. Remember, Ariel, it's still shit on shin. Mm. He feels as much as I do. I'm probably feeling a little bit more because he's he's uh he's he's directing the the, the power, but he he felt it too. I, I know I know it was shin against shin, a lot of them. Do you feel like you got under his skin, like you were in his head? Because it did feel like he was throwing so much and maybe not controlling his power, not controlling, you know, it seemed like he got tired and it's been a long time since we saw Marlon get tired in a fight like that. Do you feel like maybe he emptied the gas tank too early because of how he felt about you? Clearly, he did not like you. No, uh, he didn't, but I don't think so. I, Marlon, I said that before. My, Marlon's a power fighter. I, I don't... I think his game plan was right. I just thought he threw too much power. So I don't think he got emotional. I just didn't think he knew what I was made out of. Mm. You know, you gotta you gotta keep you gotta keep that in mind. The fighter didn't beat Marlon Marias. It was a competitor that beat him. It was that guy that says, Okay, man, you may be the better fighter. You may, but you're not the better competitor, man. I will find a way to beat you. And I said, if you don't if you don't if you don't shut my lights off, if you don't choke me off, if you don't knock me out, you're in trouble. And that's exactly what happened. He he threw too much power, which I thought he would. And uh, I I saw him breathing. He showed, his demeanor gave me everything. His breathing, his face, his hands. I I look I look at all that stuff, and I started to push the pace. Yes. I was a smaller guy. I I pushed the pace, and I, he he just he couldn't hang no more. And I saw that. Speaking of being the smaller guy, uh, first time in a while that you fight at one thirty five. So now you can compare it to you at your best at 125. Do you like fighting at 135 better? Do you want to stick around? I do like 35 better. <laughs> it's 10, 10 pounds less of, of misery. But, uh, you know, I, I have the capability of making both weight classes. Now, Dana, Dana White just said that the flyweight division is going to stay. You saved them. Can we get a round of applause? Can we get a round of applause for that? Well done. You have, do you believe him, though? Because yeah. here's my theory. My theory is that he's saying that, and it's great, just so that you can walk around as the double champion. If they take away the division, you know, it doesn't feel like it means as much. But they got rid of all these guys. How can the division actually be a thing if there's only 10 guys left? Well, you restructure it, Ariel. Okay. I think now's the time. If, they, they, I think they, they, you restructure and you find characters. You find guys. Dude, there's a lot of good guys. There's King Zulu, who is really tough, man. Out of South Africa, world champ, man, he is one dangerous human being. There's guys like that. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. It just showed you a flyweight is a new pound for pound king. The flyweight has two belts right now. The the former pound for pound was a flyweight. Mm. There's nothing wrong with it. What, what, what's happening is you just, we got to find characters, man. We have to build storylines. That's all there is to it. On, uh, even at the Bantamweight division, if it wasn't for me, Ariel, I think the Bantamweight division would be uh same thing. Who's mm. the character in there? Who's who's selling the fight? You're saving all of them. Who's got a name? 
You're doing you it. Know, you, you, do you see anybody coming up with magic tricks? <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, I love everything you're doing, and it really seems like you're you're comfortable in your own skin. You don't listen to the haters. You don't listen to the critics. And I saw it at Media Day. All the cameras were around you. Everyone wanted to talk to you. Everyone was commenting on on your 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 stare down, your props, all that stuff and more. So it's amazing what you're doing. And and I noticed that you said in the post fight interview you want to get paid like a heavyweight. It's time that they actually start treating you like one of the big stars. Is that what's the next thing that you need to get done? You need to start getting paid accordingly. That's my first fight. My first fight is with Uncle Dana White, and uh, and his checkbook. Mm. You know, let, let me start off by saying this, man. Uh, uh, Dana, the USC, they've been so good to me, man. Like these are the last people I wanna, I wanna, I wanna trash talk. But I will say this, man. As much as their business is is so so am I. I'm a prize fighter. I deserve to be paid, guys. I, I'm gonna. People talk about champ, champ. Okay, George St. Pierre, Daniel Cormier. Dude, I'm in a league of my own. I'm in a league of my own area. I'm 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 triple C man. I'm a champ, champ, champ. So I'm not a champ, champ. I'm triple C man. The Olympics is the hardest thing any, any human being could ever do. And I just want to be compensated. I speak three different languages. I feel like the UFC sees that. They know why he sees that. He's gonna compensate me. He's going to. If not, man, you can have both belts. I deserve to get paid. And he's been good to me. And he's told me, he says, the more you win, he said, you win this fight. This is what he told me in the meeting. He says, you will be compensated. So I'm just reassuring. I'm doing it publicly. So we're both public figures. So right. I want, I want Dinero. I want Mula. I deserve it, Ariel. You do. What, what are the state, uh, what are the state of your injuries right now? What are we dealing with? How, how is the ankle after the fight? How are you feeling overall? Because I, I, I of course saw the footage of you being, you know, wheeled around in a wheelchair. How are you feeling now? I'm I'm feeling better now. Like I'm well, actually I'm I'm beat up, dude. I'm still in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in Chicago. I think uh, during the fight I had I, I like threw out my my left shoulder, so that's actually more pain than my actual shins. Like th th this hurts. I'm pretty sure I tore something in my left on my left shoulder. I, I've never I've always been healthy, and uh, it just doesn't feel right. So my shins, I'm bleeding from my. I was bleeding last night from the top of my head. Uh, both my shoes. I have a cut in my knee. I think I need him in the face, or I need his tooth or whatever. But I have a gap about like this big in my knee. I don't know if it was from a kick, but I, I don't think he kicked my knees. So it must have been from me kicking, uh, kicking him to the face or whatever. So I have a gash there. Uh, I'm beat up, man. It just, it just shows I can, I can be technical, or I can, I can make it into a dog fight and I'll survive. Do you know exactly what happened to the ankle? Like, did you did you tear ligaments? Is it just a sprain? Is it worse now? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get it checked by the doctors. But you you uh, you know you're the first person that sent the the, the picture to her. I mean, uh, Heather he Heather b believed it was torn. Wow. On the top on on the top side. So, but I don't have an MRI, so I really can't can't do that. But I'm gonna get a <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a whole scan of my body at the fighting Marlin. <laughs> I recounted uh, earlier today in a column on ESPN.com about the story that both you and Eric told me in the past at UFC 177 when you essentially retired after failing to make weight prior to the Scott Jorgensen fight. And so I can't help but ask Mr. Eric in back over there. You were, oh, you, were there he is. You, you were jumping around like a little child. You were so happy. It was beautiful to see. This was as much a victory for you, I feel like, as it was for Henry. And and, and and we should note because you felt slighted last year that this is now your second double champ in the span of a month and a half. This is an incredible thing, Eric. How do you feel after all of this? I feel on top of the world, and it was four weeks, and it was in Chicago here four weeks ago. Wow, Chicago so, has has done you well. <clears throat> Chicago's been good to me. Why did you not except, let this? Yes. Go ahead. Except I got I got robbed. Like yesterday. What happened? My wallet in my passport. Left it in the hotel lobby. Went to run after uh, Henry's doctor uh, to try to get a prescription for him. And then I went back up to the room. And when I went back down, when I realized what I had done, it was gone. Oh. But I got video of it. So I'm going to post it. I'm gonna Release post it. it on my Instagram. Let's see if we can find this guy. Okay. Well, not on the, why, don't we, why don't we put Ariel Hawani on the spot? Maybe Ariel Hawani could help. Okay. What do you need? How can I help? <laughs> what do you want? You want me to release it? Helicopter. 
What do you want him to do? Use his nose to sniff him out like a hound? <laughs> Listen, I'm like, telling you, I like that idea. I'm trying to right the wrong. This this trophy, <laughs> it's coming to you, Henry, for last year. It might even come to you for Fighter of the Year of 2019 and for the coach doing his thing. I mean, no one no like one is it. comparing to what you guys are doing right now, and it's amazing. Eric, why did you not let him retire back then? Why do, You were the only one that believed in this guy, it seemed. Why did you not let him do that? He accomplished enough at, the, at that point. He was an Olympic champion. Because I thought, because of, because of Saturday night, because I knew one day he would be, he, he could be one of the greatest. And, and that's why, simple, simple put, that's what I told him. You could be the greatest one day. You could, you're going to be world champion. Henry, are you serious about 145? Why not? Why not? Why not? You guys going to count me out again? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I love it. I love it. Uh, I think so. The fight that I would really want, Ariel, and this has nothing to do with 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 this. I mean, it just has everything to do with competition. Is if if uh, if Frankie Edgar wins this fight against uh, Max Holloway, that's a fight that I'm interested in. And we had talked about it before. But, you know, Coach yep. uh, Captain Eric has mentioned it in interviews. I, I like the fact. I, I like his stature. I, I think the height seems very well. He's a wrestler. Um, I think if he wants this fight with Max Holloway, I think, I think me and him can throw down. It's not and, and nothing against Frankie. I, just, I want to compete against the best man. You know, I, I know he took offense when I called him out with the Marlon Marais. I know he didn't believe in me, but uh, why not? Why, why, why can't I win another belt? They, 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 they've been telling me I couldn't. They've been telling me I can't. They, they told me I was going to get knocked out in the second round against Marlon. They told me I was going to get stopped by Demetri Johnson. They told me I was going to get stopped by TJ Dillashaw. Dude, the sky's the limit, man. I want to challenge my mind, body, and soul. And if he wants this fight, and if he wants to do it, let's uh, let's 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 make it happen. Would you like to fight again this year, or do you think you're going to have to take the rest of the year off because of the injuries? Um, I'm gonna have to play that by ear, but no, I would I would I would like to fight towards the end of the year for sure. I would like to headline it too, man. There's no more me being co-main event either. Like, yeah, I, I I'm. I feel like I'm the new face of the UFC. I really do. I, my, my credentials, nobody in the UFC has my credentials. Nobody. Not Conor McGregor. Nobody. Mm. And uh, I, want, I want to be paid like one. I want to be treated like one. After the win in, uh, in January over TJ, you went on like a three-month world tour celebrating. What do we got planned for this one? Uh, well, I'm going back to Brazil. I remember I made, I made that promise that I'll go back to Brazil and, 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 and celebrate with them. I'm going to take that belt down there. I'm going to go to Mexico. I'm going to go to a bunch of different... I'm going to go to uh, Dubai. I have a, a good friend that's going to be fighting down there. So I'll be hanging out with the Sheikh and the wow. royal family. Dang. Um, Look at so you. Just doing, big, just doing big things there, man. And hopefully, and hopefully people see that I'm, that I'm the truth, man. Like, the, like there's no denying it. You don't get lucky four different times. You just don't. It's amazing. And, I hope you man, get a lot of sponsors if, if, if now. Anything, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Maybe I'm just not cringy enough, or maybe I'm gonna dye my hair blonde. Man. I don't know. I gotta do something there. Yo. No, don't do that. Please don't do that. Could I just ask? Where I you... will say this. Yes, go ahead. I will say this. Leading up to the Olympics area, I was I was a kid that was sponsored by everybody: Coca Cola, Polo, Ralph Lauren, Adidas, BMW, Crest, Tide, the biggest brands in the freaking world. And I get to MMA, it's just like. I don't know. I, th I thought the cringy. I thought the cringiness would be cool, but I guess not. No, do not <laughs> doubt yourself. It's working. Trust me, it is working. Good things are going to come. I have no doubt of it. Let's end on this since you brought up the Olympics. You said after you beat DJ, that was a big deal, but the Olympics will always trump everything. Now that you've gotten two belts and you're in this rare category with some of the greatest ever, are we starting to rival how you felt after winning in 2008, or will that still always be number one for you? Oh man, I think I think it will. I think it'll always be number one. Okay. Because I, if you watch my excitement when I won there, Ariel, it's one of the most precious, beautiful celebrations you'll ever see in your life. I and I, I've never been somebody. I've never really until now. But I, before I won the Olympics, I was never really a show. I never really showed emotion after winning. But I remember the whole year of two thousand seven. I had just gone through. I couldn't win a tournament to save my life. Like everything was just going wrong. But I still stuck to the race, and when I won the Olympics, down every match, I remember grabbing my Amer I remember grabbing the American flag and just yelling like from the top of my lungs. Ah! 
Ah, but I was actually crying. Like it's an emotion that only a world champion could ever feel. Man, it's just, it's this emotion that you're so happy that it's it brings like a sadness to it. And this one was special because of that. Because because Marlon was was a killer, man. Marlon is on a 15 fight win streak. Has knocked out his last three opponents in the first round. I mean, the dude is the dude is 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 dangerous. And I was able to. To be the guy that I knew that could probably shut my lights out and prove everybody wrong once again and become double champ, become an, I mean, I'm an instant Hall of Famer, Ariel. Yes. It's amazing. It's an incredible story. Now, who, who would have thought? Now, yeah. Dana White, hold yeah. on, I got, a, I got a message for Dana White. I want you to tag him. Okay. I says, Dana White, this is enough, man. Welcome to the new, this is your new face to the UFC. His name is Henry Cejudo. He is the Olympic champ. Flyweight champ and now bantamweight champ in the world, and I want to get paid. My name has officially changed from the messenger to Triple C, and you can add another zero to that check, Dana White, or you can have both belts. That's it. You're gonna walk away. You are willing to walk away if you don't get paid accordingly. Accurate, inaccurate. I got. I got. I got to get paid. I got to get paid, and if that's what I have to do, then you know what? You can have both of them. You, he already promised him to keep the the flywood division. Keep it. Keep the keep keep, uh, keep your word. I just want to get paid. For now, <laughs> enjoy the victory, Henry. Heal up. I hope you get out of Chicago uh, and are able to, you know, be okay on your way out. And 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 keep doing that thing. That thing right there. That's the thing. I love that thing. Whatever that look is. Whatever you channel while you do that. Please keep doing it because it's just phenomenal. That is the money maker. I love it. <laughs> I amazing. channel the chi. It's the chi within me. Thank you, Henry. Congratulations to you, Captain Eric, and the rest of the team. I appreciate this very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again, Eric. You're the man, man. Thank you. You're you're a big part of this too, man. Thank you for uh, thank you for pushing me and allowing me to be me.